Hello and welcome to Candid Talk with Adele. The first month of this year, we did so much to give you some information around emotional intelligence, choosing meaningful friends, and growing and being accountable at all times. This month, we bring you investments. Do you understand how to invest? Do you understand insurance? So today I bring you a very amazing guest. If you are interested in this topic, please subscribe and in the meantime, join the conversation. Let's get started. Today, we are in a new location, the new Nanjing Hotel on Lugogo Bypass. If you want all the exclusive small events and meetings and exciting accommodation, this is the place to be. So find time and visit the, the new Nanjing Hotel. I promised you a very exciting and interesting guest, and this is the time. This guest is Mr. Zach Chisesi. He, ha he is a hold of CFA Charter. He's going to tell us more about it because it seems something more into financial elements, but let's get started to that. So welcome, Zach, to this show. Thank you so much, Adele, for having me. Yes, yes. Um, this is the start of the second year of yes, Candid please. Talk with Adele, so you are a very, very special guest today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, why not earlier? <laughs> yes, I know, I know. So. CFA Charter Holder. Yes. What does that mean? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, hello, viewers. Um, thank you so much, Adele, for having me here. Uh, basically, um, when you look at the investment world, there is a need for investment professionals who know how to value businesses before you even get started, who need to advise clients on what kind of investment decision uh, investment decisions they can make. Yes. Um, you could be an individual there, and you're saying. I want to start up a project, but I want to confirm whether I'll be making um, positive cash flows and how long it's going to take. So what happens is that there is a designation that you can get that is internationally recognized. Okay. And it's an American destination, but it's recognized all over the world. And it's a designation that helps you learn how to value investments. Um, they are quite complex, but yeah. it's worth the read. Um, in Uganda, we're about 49 charter only? holders. Yes, only. And in the world, they're about... Um, um, less than 200,000. Is it complicated? It is, <laughs> but that's how investments are. And the, the way you look at it is yeah. that um, many people go into investments without consulting a professional. Sure. And that's the biggest mistake people make. And yet, when you fall sick, you go to a doctor who has spent years studying. Mm -hmm. Why not in investment? So there are people who have read and have been qualified to give guidance. They consider a number of things, the macroeconomic factors, what's happening in the country, uh, which industry are you going to get into and is it a starting industry? Yeah. Is it an industry which is, um, which is developed? You look at um, uh, the barriers to entry, you look at, we, we look at a number of Everything. things in short and then we give you proper professional guidance which will help you cut a lot on a number of losses you'd have made mm. if you just went in blind. So is this what you do on a daily basis? That is what I do on a daily basis, <laughs> although uh, the kind of clients that I deal with are, yeah. of course, we have retail clients, meaning individuals who yeah. come and say, Zach, we, we, we have money in the bank, but it's not attracting anything. And do you have options which can give me a return? But my biggest challenge is that COVID taught us that we need to have access to our money. Yeah. Because you may have money in very long-term investments, like a number of investment clubs have advised. Many of them have their money in, in land, for example. But what happens when you have a liquidity need? Very true. Someone wants to live in a group. So that's where we come in to give guidance on some of the options that you can have that can help you um, really build a very well diversified portfolio. Okay, so yes, before we talk about the options, yes. we're going to talk about why you must invest Mr. Zach Chisasi, yes. why should a person invest? Why that, can't I just save my money, mm -hmm. leave it in the bank, mm -hmm. and just keep looking at it? I have a healthy bank account. Why yes. should I go ahead and invest this, in, uh, this money? That's a good question. Why should you invest? Yeah. Let me give you a mathematical explanation of why you need to invest. Yeah. The truth is, um, many of us have jobs. We are working somewhere, and we are hoping to retire at one point. Sure. Now, Hypothetically speaking, let us say you are earning probably 5 million shillings a month. Probably, hypothetically speaking. So if you're earning 5 million a month, it means that, and let's assume that 5 million is supporting your standard of living. Yes. It means in a year you have 
you have earned and spent about 60 million, right? Sure. Now, when retirement comes, in order for you to maintain your standard of living, you have to have a business that's generating that same kind of money after all costs have been removed. Yeah. 60 million chips just to maintain the kind of standard of living you had yeah. before you retire. Yeah. Now, because of that, the question is how will that happen? Because you can't survive on your pension because your pension is just a fraction. So you find a situation where many people had money in land, for example. Now, what happens is when they retire and they do not have a business that's generating cash flows, because today I'm also going to say something about cash flows. Yes. Because they don't have cash flows, they end up having to sell their land. So you may get one twenty million, but that's going to last you for two years. Because remember, you're surviving no. with sixty million. And by in ten years' time, yeah. all your assets will have been sold just to maintain your standard of living. That's the reason why many people say this was a wealthy person when he was working. What happened when he retired? Mm -hmm. It's just that just to maintain the standard of living, not even to go higher, just to maintain the standard of living you had before, you needed a business that was generating cash flow of at least sixty billion a month. Uh, yes. Now, that is why that. you need to think of investing now. And also something else, Adele, yes, one yes. of the biggest mistakes people make is to go into investments after retirement. Because you see, by is, the time is, you... Is that wrong? It is not wrong, but however, you have to look at what we call risk management. Yeah. Because when you're retiring, and the reason I'm talking about retirement, retiring is because there are quite a number of people on the show who are who have jobs and they're comfortable with their jobs. True. Not being a political will come and they won't have... <laughs> True. Now the challenge with that is that when, once you once you reach uh, the retirement age, okay, and you don't have those cash flows, it can, and you're looking for options, okay, that you have. The the mis biggest mistake people make is they start businesses when they're retired. Now, one remember, you have other pressing issues such as health issues. Yeah. You have many costs that come up that you did have before you retired, and the challenge with that is that. The job that you're getting to, the problem with jobs, sorry, not jobs, with investments, is that they take two to five years to stabilize. Just, to That's why you're going to make losses. You're mm -hmm. going to employ a relative. They will, <laughs> they, I mean, you, you know the stories. They will take all that money and things like that. Now, the yeah. problem with that is it's better you pass through those challenges when you're young and your income can help you to recover. But when you're retired yeah. and you're surviving on that money that you saved, what happens? And those challenges come they come. So the worst time to start a business yeah. is when you retire. Unless you're starting a business where you have experience that you've built over time. But the challenge is I'm a lawyer. I've retired. But I'm going to open up a shop in Chico. That is the wrongest time to start. You should have done that 20 years earlier. So that by that time you have built experience to help you see how to, <laughs> to run this to run business. business. So yes. that's what we call risk management. And that's also something that we always do. Because there are investments which are good when you're much younger. And as you grow older, you move from riskier investments to less risky investments. And that's where my next question was coming from. Risk mm. management. Most right. of us fear to invest because mm. the risk is too much. Correct. So you put your money in this small business. Yes. And one year down the road, because the, the rate at which our business is closed in Uganda is too high. Correct. So as a person who has that experience, mm. how do you guide someone to know where to invest? Yes. And what are those risk profiles? Yes. A study was done actually, and actually in the region, Uganda has the highest number of startups. It has the highest number of startups, yeah. but not necessarily the highest number of success rates. There's, there are what we call rules of thumb, whether, meaning that it doesn't matter what I'm doing. The rule of thumb is invest an amount of money you're willing to lose. That's number one. Isn't that It's painful, scary? but it's the truth. <laughs> it's what, let, me, let, me, let me build a little bit on this. Yes. Um, I have a job, I'm earning my 5 million shillings, yes. um, probably I'm saving a percentage of that. So if a business idea comes, in fact someone said that the best idea or the business idea that sounds the best is always a startup business. Let me tell you, anybody who comes to you Adele and says, I want to share with you this exciting opportunity, yes. no matter which, whether it is so clothes, whether it's selling shoes, whether it's starting up uh, <laughs> a talk, uh, I mean, uh, any business, yeah. it will always sound good. And viable. Beginning. And viable. <laughs> the projections look nice. Everything looks perfect. So the biggest mistake that an individual makes is to get the entire savings and put in this business. Because, I mean, the cash flows look so nice. And you're like, wow, let us start big. So when I say invest an amount of money you want to, you're willing to lose, is 
the money you can, can want to you, you you want to try to invest should be an amount of money which if the business did not succeed it will not cripple your standard of living because remember there you're a mother you have children there's yeah. school fees that has to be paid you have a house rent has to be paid or a mortgage has to be paid day to day cost day to day cost so you have to look and ask yourself okay i'm giving this a two to five year plan no matter how exciting the business sounds let me invest 10 maximum 20 percent of my savings and let me use this as a learning process of course you're going to meet people who are going to say wow well, guess what this person got a loan went to do this business and they're successful but you see those are what we call outliers they are one-offs one-offs they are one, -offs. one in a hundred they are not the representation of most <laughs> success stories so that's what you get wrong true and that's the reason why as i said the younger you are the the the, the more risk you're willing to take because you have less responsibilities true. but as you grow older of course it's important to save and you know when you make a bad investment decision you know it's important to learn from those mistakes that you've made because if you never learn from those because i met people they invest money a hundred percent with uh, a ponzi it doesn't work out the next year they're making the same mistake <laughs> you have to learn because there's a reason why god makes you pass through certain challenges yeah. so that you can learn from them and make wiser decisions very true very very very, very true yeah. and and that takes me to one of the most important <laughs> elements in investing yes. growth that growing your money yes because if it stays there stunted mm. you're looking at it under your bed oh i have yes. 100 million yes. it will be 100 million today correct 100 million tomorrow mm. correct so in this case how do i uh, if, if i'm going to invest mm. what research do i need to do first okay. so that i don't make a very very big mistake mm. for example we've seen ponzi schemes coming up people running away with the money what true. do i need to do first mm. to put that hard earned money in that investment okay thank you very much now the most important and i won't talk about five six seven things i will just yeah. give my my True. examples and also with my experience where i'm working because i deal with pension schemes i deal with private individuals and so on and so forth now the number one uh principle of which i would say is knowledge learning okay learning True. by that i mean finding a way to keep that 10 million, that 5 million, 100 million, in such a way that it will grow as you keep learning or generating skills that will help you grow that business that you expect will prepare you for retirement. What I'm saying is that surround yourself with people whose experience you use. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you want to get involved in, um, for example, Adele, someone wants to start up this wonderful YouTube and you, you, know, you, know, you know the costs and everything. <laughs> Look for someone called that there who has done it before and ask, tell me your experience. Yeah. Because you see, um, someone who's looking for money for you to partner up in a business will have very successful cash flows, showing you the, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the great success story. But look for someone who has been there, who can give you their experience, especially in the early stages of their business. And learn from them. Because experience does not necessarily have to be your own. You can learn from other people. Mm -hmm. So knowledge is so important as you slowly invest in that business that you expect will open doors for you. So just like uh, Warren Buffett, uh, for those of you who do not know, he's uh, the greatest investor um, that has ever lived. He has grown such a large portfolio in terms of seeing how to invest money across uh, the globe. Yeah. And um, one of his favorite um, anecdotes is um, when he says that you, you, shouldn't test the, you, you shouldn't test the depth of a lake with both feet. And that's exactly how investments are. <laughs> so, so it means when, when you hear a very great idea, yeah. just start with the tip. <laughs> Sorry, my story, because if you jump all in, you might burn. Yes. Now, the, the problem with, with, with losing that 100 million yeah. is, is not the 100 million. The 100 million is not the problem. The problem is the time it took you to make it. Yeah. It took you 10 years to save, you've lost 10 years of your life. So that's, that's the attitude you should have. Rebuilding so it is that. time that you will never recover. So that's the reason why if you think about money like that, you'll be more cautious about how much to invest. So what I'm simply trying to say is don't say no to an idea, a business idea. Mm -hmm. Say yes, but how much should you invest is what I'm giving guidance on. Don't invest an amount of money you're not willing to lose. Don't get the money from your child's, mm -hmm. um, you know, the probably school fees account. Or oh, please, those are people that you need to keep on supporting. So that is the, that is the golden rule. Get a mentor, 
Get someone who will give you the right guidance. I would prefer people who are not emotionally attached to you. <laughs> Get someone who is completely independent. Yes. Go into a number of clubs, Rotary clubs, Lions clubs. Go, because you will meet people who will always give you guidance of who to go and talk to. In any business you're going to start, there is always someone who has done it before. That's what my mother always tells me. That yes. Someone has done it before. Correct. Someone has done it before. And even if nobody in the market is doing what you're doing now, there's someone who tried and failed. Go and <laughs> listen to them. Build that knowledge. But no matter how attractive figures look, I can tell you there's nothing as good as a startup business. So you have to have that mindset and go slow when you're going to this investment. Very true. Yes, Very yes. true. As we conclude this conversation around investments, I hope you're learning that when you're going to invest, you must have some rules to guide you. So rules of investment, that's what I'm calling them. Yes, yes, <laughs> so yes. as we conclude this, yes. how then that final word you tell someone who's trying to now to get their, they are convinced after this conversation, they want to get that money. And I know in the next conversation we shall have something around portfolios and all those things. So you have to stay here or you have to subscribe to get more information. There are different myths around investing. If I get my money and put it in a certain portfolio, that 4% I'm given is not usually that attractive. Mm. If I get this money and keep looking at it, most likely, then I'm not going to lose so much. Mm. For example, if I have 50 million, I've been using a 50 million as, a, as an example, and a certain investment portfolio is giving me 4%. Mm. That's how much, mm. if I do the math. Quite yes. So this myth, Zach, constraint people from investing. I get my small money, I put in this <coughs> institution, it's only giving me 4%. It's little money, so I keep my money under, under the bed. But also, I invest this money and someone disappears. Mm. So just looking at the, the viewer, mm. what is that myth they should just forget about and focus as we conclude the investment, um, mm. why it matters? Uh, thank you very much for this. And uh, I'm sure there are many viewers who have uh, painfully lost, you know. Yeah. And uh, there are quite a number of people who will just out of being um, ashamed, will not tell they lost, but <laughs> I can tell you most of the people have lost in one way or another. Yeah. It would have been little money, but that little at that time when you lost it was a lot of money. <laughs> Even yeah. if it was 100,000, yeah. maybe when the university, when that happened. And it, 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 you know how rough it was. So. So, so, so losing money is painful, I can be honest, it's very, very, very painful. But if you have lost money, look at that as tuition. <laughs> tuition to learn. You see, the issue is, uh, making a mistake is not the problem. But if you repeat it, that is the problem. That is the problem. Learn. Now, the biggest, the, 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 the characteristic that all those business have is that they do not have a regulator. They do not have a regulator. Mm -hmm. I'm investing money with my brother. If he takes the money away, who is going? Who are you going to run to? No one. You invest money with the <laughs> pastor. He closes the church and runs away. Who are you going to run to? No one. No one. So rule of thumb: if you have that money that you have made, invest where there's a regulator. No matter how little the return you're making is, no matter how little you're getting four percent, but you're sure you want to lose that money. Yeah. You're getting eight percent, but you're sure because. The, the time when you're going to get most of that money to invest is when you've built the right skills in a particular line of business where you've built such a good supply chain or distributor chain or some, or you have got probably contacts of suppliers in China, you've built a good relationship, you have, then you can afford to invest. You've built a customer base. Now, in fact, you have a problem where stock is the problem. <laughs> now, you see, now, you've built a business. I'm not even talking about a container. Yeah. You might even be having 10 customers. But now you find a problem where you're at work, but then people supply, going. people are going. Now there is wiser to now <laughs> with room. But do not get all that money. When there's no customer, yeah. you're living on hope for the future. So what I'm still trying to say is, you see, it's, it's, it's better to have a problem of no stock yeah. than a problem of where the customers <laughs> Where do I put that? Where story? do I put exactly? So if at all you believe that you have a business idea that's successful, start small. Build that one customer, that two customers. Yeah. When you reach a point now where demand is more than supply, then it is wiser to now start increasing on how much you invest. It is Very a true. smarter way of doing business. Very true. Yes, please. I am sure we have convinced you. <laughs> I'm very, very sure we have done a good job 
convincing you that investing matters. Yes. Now, if you want to learn more about the different portfolios, about where you can put your money and it is safe, you have to subscribe and watch the next episode. In the meantime, we are at the new Nanjing Hotel where everything is beautiful and classy and that's our new home. So stay subscribing and comment and let us know what you think about this show. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.